What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC, and in this video I'm checking out two new wallets from Domain Leatherworks, the Elm over here on the left and the Huey on the right. And so if you're not familiar with Domain Leatherworks, it's probably because it's a relatively new company. John, the founder, reached out back in November saying he's been working with leather for years, decided to start a company, really kind of go full time into it and won some feedback on some wallets. So he sent these over, specifically said, I don't need a video, I'm just really looking for feedback. But if you want to put them in a video, you're more than welcome to as well. And so I sent that feedback a few weeks later, but have still been carrying these wallets ever since, up until about last week when the Alpaca wallets that I just did an overview on came in. And so really had a nice chance to carry both of these for about a month each and have been really impressed with both of them. So he's based out of Philadelphia, makes these in Philadelphia, but not only are they made in the USA, but they're sourced in the USA as well. The leather is from a company called Wicket & Craig. It's full grain traditional harness leather. The thread is a poly wax cord sourced from Maine Thread Company. And so everything from these wallets is made in the USA and then he assembles them in the USA as well. So it's not one of those things where it's assembled in the USA, but the materials could come from who knows where. This is actually all sourced and made in the USA. Really dig the logo. It's got this eagle logo and his more kind of traditional logo. And then even on his kind of secondary logo has that uh, eagle in there and the USA, made in the USA or the USA stamp there. So really enjoy the logo. The Elm is going to run you $60. And this is a wallet that's really more my speed. This is the type of wallet that I typically pick up, a minimal front pocket wallet. And this one's really good. It's got a pocket on the back side, I guess, if you're counting the logo side as the front, on the back side that the, he recommends putting two cards. It can fit more, but the recommendations too. It definitely isn't tight with two cards in there. In the center pocket, it says two to four cards, and I have three in there right now. Unlike the Alpaca wallet, it, even from the get-go, it wasn't super tight with two card, or with five or six cards in there. It can accommodate them with no problem. You're not going to have a problem sliding them in and out like you did on the Alpaca wallet. And so there wasn't as much of a break-in period with this one, but at the same time, they're also not loose in there. Nothing's going to fall out. Everything's super secure, so that's nice. The backside has this cash slot, and I wasn't sure how that was going to work because it's just kind of open sitting there, but it works really well. As you saw when I was shaking it, nothing's falling out. You can shake this all day. I've never had any cash fall out of there. I've been carrying the same bills in there for a while, and you can fit them either direction. If you put them kind of fold side in, the fold side in, these corners will bend up a little bit. I noticed if you put it the other way, you don't get that as much, but if you're accessing the cache a lot and you want to be able to pull it out, you definitely can carry it this way and still access that, those folds. But again, that corner is going to end up a little bit folded up and just kind of curved, which isn't a problem. It's money, so obviously you're going to be getting rid of it, so not the biggest deal in the world. But you can see there's nothing really holding that in place, but it is still super secure. So the dimensions on this wallet are two and seven eighths inch wide by four inches tall. It's around eight cards max and he says about six builds. You can fit more than the recommended in either of these wallets. Leather is pretty forgiving. It's gonna stretch out a little bit, but if you do overstuff it, you just tend to it tends to stretch out to the point where if you start putting in less cards, then they're gonna start getting a little bit loose and fall out where if you kind of follow those guidelines, it stays pretty tight. And a lot of times even the wallets will mold around what you carry and really kind of match your carry, especially if it's a back pocket wallet where you're sitting on it, a little bit less so with the front pocket wallet. But I got this one in the russet color and there's two colors available for both. Options are exactly the same. You have the russet leather or the black leather and then six different colors of thread. I don't have the list of all the different colors, but you can just go to the product listing and click on the drop down. Sorry for kicking the tripod. Um, click on the drop down and see all of those options. So the Elm's gonna run you $60. I think this is a great front pocket option and definitely more my speed. The Huey is gonna run you $100. It's a little bit of a more substantial wallet. You can carry a lot more in it, but also just gonna be a little bit bulkier. And I picked this one up thinking that it was really a back pocket wallet, but it works both ways. I mostly carried this in my front pocket with the exception of days where my front pocket was just overloaded and I needed the space and so I'd move it to the back pocket. It is a little bit bigger, but it didn't feel uncomfortable in the back pocket or in the front pocket, I'm sorry. And so $100, the dimensions on this one are about four and a half inches wide by three and one eighth inch tall. 
It does have the exterior card slot on the front that is made to hold two cards. Again, you can stuff more in there if you want, but you do risk stretching that out a little bit so that if you ever downgrade from two or from more cards to two or one, they might slide out of there, but as is very snug, just like the other one. The main difference on this one is that it has this flap that opens up into a large kind of cavernous pocket that can accommodate a lot of cards. There's an internal section for more cards that you can fit three or four cards in, but you can even put more on the outside of that pocket in the main section, or you can put bills or change. So if I take these bills, when I did carry cash in here, I would typically just quad fold it and tuck it in there. And you can carry change. It's not a perfect seal, but I didn't have any problems with anything falling out. But I also didn't carry any real change. I do carry change for parking meters and stuff like that, but it's all in the center console of my car. And so, didn't carry any real change. I did carry a challenge coin in there most of the time. And right now I have the awesome Hank gear. I don't remember the name of this, but it's a dragon coin. Really cool looking coin actually, with the dragon on one side and the eye on the other. And so, I've been carrying a challenge coin in there. That works well. It definitely could fit some small EDC gear, but I tried to avoid the temptation to put in a small Swiss Army knife and a worry stone, stuff like that, because I didn't want this to turn into a pouch. I really wanted to use it as a wallet, and so that's exactly what I've done. The fold-in flap, I wasn't sure how well that's going to stay in place, but it's really snug and secure as well. It definitely doesn't come open in your pocket or even unintentionally in your hand. You really have to intentionally open it. There's no... It's not hard to open, you just slide your finger under there, but it's not going to slide open on its own. It's never going to fall open, so that was really nice as well. Now, if neither of these models are your speed, there's a third kind of in-between model. I don't remember if I mentioned the price on the Huey. The Huey is $100, and I did mention it on the Elm, $60. So in-between model is the Ridley, and that one's actually a more traditional bifold wallet, also, also leather, same options to russet or black in the six thread colors, but that one's going to run you $85. And so it is a more traditional bifold in the sense that it folds open, there's card slots on each side, but on the exterior there's a cash slot just like the one on the Elm, and so a little bit of a combination of that and a traditional wallet. But really good option as well. I would think of that one more as a back pocket carry, but I thought the same thing of this one. I've been using it as a front pocket carry. So they're pretty versatile. And the really nice thing about leather is that it's gonna kind of age with you. It's gonna mold around your cards where it fits everything pretty much perfectly. And the patina on it's gonna darken over time or lighten a little bit with the black you're gonna have these kind of wear marks. This one's particularly beat up. I think I mentioned I had it in a backpack for a while next to a pry bar that chewed it up a little bit. But, so it's a particularly beat up, but I still think it looks really good. And they will stretch a little bit if you overstuff them, which was kind of an issue with the alpaca ones. I haven't done a lot of heavy carrying with those to know for sure, but I don't think that material is as forgiving if you do wanna stretch it out because it's tighter. And so these ones definitely can accommodate a little bit more than those X-Pack wallets. But really cool option. If you're interested in these even a little bit, check out his Etsy store. He has the three wallets right now. I'm sure it'll expand to more models as his company grows. And I'll also link to the Instagram. So if you're not in the market for one now, but maybe in the future, give him a follow, check out what he has to offer. Definitely love supporting a small company, especially one based here in the US. And you're really getting high quality leather. It's well done, well stitched. This one, again, is a little more beat up, but neither of these look like they're going to fall apart anytime soon. They're gonna last a very long time and just look better and better as age. So definitely give him a follow, check out both the Instagram and the store. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Any feedback you may have as well, I'll pass along. But thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button. And as always, I hope you have a great one. Take care.